the scene is perfectly set, as you can see. One of the most charismatic players as well, Zero, when you watch him out there. It was a sign of things to come, though, and a definite strategy right off the bat here. Yeah. A little look over to his dad just to see whether that got any of the line at all. I don't know if Nadal's completely convinced it was out, actually. Fifteen. Spare two chances. Good success with that double hander into the Nadal for him. Perhaps pulling a little shorter and wider than that one. How hard do you think it is mentally for uh, Zverev to get his head around the fact that this is this is going to be really painful physically? Uh, Nadal, Djokovic, Murray, they all just make it such a physical contest. And just to prepare and think you can win you got to you've really got to suffer some pain out on court He was training at the end of last Pretty year good. for that sort of thing as well. He, Jez Green, who, as you rightly said, is a fantastic trainer, a good person, and he took his time with Zverev when he got asked to work with him, didn't push him too hard at the start. He was still growing. hasn't grown for a while now, so that has allowed them to work a little harder. I know at the end of last year in November, he actually didn't hit a tennis ball for five weeks. He just trained as hard as he could in Florida where he spends his off-season before picking up the rackets again. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the shot you're talking about, Mark. The short angle, double-handed backhand. This is a must-have shot if you want to really challenge Nadal on the forehand side. And you'll see how early he tries to get it before it gets deep in the court and just angling Nadal off. I guess Djokovic was the first one to really expose Nadal in that department. So good. Yeah. First game. On a huge point, though, to execute like he has just done. My goodness. Oh, they had everything. The breaks at the start of the rally, Josh. Oh. I thought that was going to be good enough. And then on full end range to have the soft hands and the skill set to get just over the net. That's magnificent. Beautiful. First game.
That's what he can produce, and that is why everyone is so excited about him. Well, he knew it was going to be difficult today, Rafa. I don't know if he was talking about spider cam there, was he? I believe so. Yeah. Just up in the air, a little bit in front of where Zerev is right now. So I think they're going to, yeah. Well, it's still there right now. So it's going to be interesting as if they start moving it or not. Oh, he's not really too worried about it, apparently. <laughs> And just, we'll get a good look here when Nadal returns, how deep he is standing to return. He is behind the Melbourne sign, which is about four metres behind the baseline. And for me, this is a problem. When he was at his best, when he, was, when he won the Olympics and the US Open back in 2009, I feel he was a lot closer to the baseline. Because he hits the ball with so much spin, when you're that deep in the court, it just, it's hard to get it over the service line, isn't it? Yep. And against a guy like Zerev, who can lean on anything of his height. Since we saw even on that second point. That's a better point. That's the sort of point I feel Nadal needs to play. He's got to get on the front foot. He's got to use his aggression and try and angle Zverev off the court, get the, the big guy moving. Hard to do that if you're going to stand three metres behind the baseline. Oh. Interesting that Zverev was going to the yeah. serve and volley here. Yeah, it's good. One thing he did exceptionally well in Hotman Cup when he beat Federer, and again, I know, just got to put the asterisk there that it is an exhibition event, but I can tell you they were playing flat out. His accuracy on his first serve was spectacularly good that day. For a guy his size, it hasn't always been as huge as asset yet. It's big, it's fast, but he hasn't placed it as well as he's needed to, but he did that day. What about his variation? Most guys, big guys, can serve big, hard, flat. Are you happy with the variation, the development of that over it, the past 12 months? It, it's coming. I still don't think his serve is what it should be. Should be. I think or it will be. Yeah, yeah, it will be. His ground is just so good. I think he's almost not needed to focus as heavily on his yeah, serve as he needs to at this level. But again, it's a learning curve, isn't it, Josh? I love his demeanor. <laughs> Not, not jumping out of his skin. He's just going about his business beautifully, conserving energy, not overhyped or carrying on. One thing I do want to ask you about, the run that Rafa had in 2010, US Open, the little change in grip on the serve, the Uncle Tony talking about his chat with the great Jack Nicklaus, the golfer, saying about, you know, hit it hard, then learn to control it. Some of the numbers there were remarkable. I mean, his... Average first serve speed, 119 miles per hour. That's 192 Ks for people working in that money. Oh, it's just exquisite, this start. Lightning fast from Zerev. All the shots. Look at the control here. Great control with his left hand, almost flicking it. Just beautiful control. By comparison, that last serve from Rafa going in at 113 miles an hour, 183. But last year, his season average was 109 miles an hour, 175 Ks. And during the Open that year in 2010, he was knocking a few serves in at 135 miles per hour. He hasn't been near it since. Last year, he hit one at 126, his fastest serve. Well, I think that's sort of what happened. Yeah. Why, why then and why not now? Well, he's gone back to his old serve. Service motion, service grip. That's, that's for sure. Oh. 
I can't imagine that it's it's, it's, these numbers have been overlooked by their team. I mean, the, the, the analysis is there for everyone to use. Yeah, I know they're meticulous, and I, I believe he's meticulous with all this sort of stuff, and that's why he. I know when he trialled a different racket in the off-season, all the numbers pointed towards it being far better, far more beneficial to the game style he wanted to play. However, when push came to shove and trying to change, he just couldn't get his head around changing it because he's used this racket for so long, but yet the stats showed that it wasn't the best racket for him, but it's got to feel good in your hand as well. Yeah, it's always just that one event. Because it serves the most. You know, if he serves well. Oh, yeah. Because his first serve percentage statistically year on year is one of the best in the business. Maybe confidence, part of it as well. how he explodes onto it because if these top players are getting their racket on the ball as you see here from Zverev often enough this is what happens I mean that is massive I mean he's just shy of 100 miles an hour there and that was an easy pass easy that's just a normal forehand and he's cruising here great start Almost a must-win game, really, isn't it, for Nadal? Look sharp so far in this tournament, and it's going to need to be today to keep the threat from zero at bay. I like this. Try and boss his opponent around with it, and he volleys reasonably well. He, he's technically sound. He's worked on it a lot over the years. Played well in doubles. One of the best doubles players in the world. Best finisher at the net on tour in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sasha Zverev's world. Be nice to hit a tennis ball that clean. 166 kilometers an hour. That is easy power. A grip change or a technical change on the serve, or a combination of a bit of both. Uh, for Rafa, yeah. I think it's. I think he's gone back, as you say, to his old grip. Yeah. I think the other grip was a little flatter, obviously more forehand, so he could get a flatter face on it. I wonder what his first serve average was though back then. 65 that tournament, and he's he was 70 percent last year, and he was winning 80 percent of 82 percent of the points in the U.S. Open in 2010 last year. He won 69 percent. I mean, that 5% drop is worth the 82%. Oh, easily. That's... And some. Even more so now, even com compared to back in that day when everyone's hitting it hard. Hard work already. In what might be a very lengthy encounter between these two for Nadal. He holds his first service game, but Zerev with the early break, 2-1. Rafa's here, and uh, he's going to have to be uh, very present today. Can pull the crowd, can't he, old Rafa? Oh, he, uh, he and uh, Roger can fill a stadium uh, against anybody. I mean, today 
we've got the double delight of watching uh, a player that is the future of our game as well. And I'm certainly not, by saying that, insinuating that Rafa is the past. He's still very Six much please. the present. Thank you. Please take any seat for now. Ready to play. Thank you. going to be fun Josh it's going to be an awful lot of fun watching both players trying to work each other out here there's going to be some massive hitting but some lovely use of the angles and they're both all court players as well when they need to be Two oh seven, first serve He'll consistently serve over that 200 mark. So that's a big difference, isn't it, compared to the Nadal serve? Good enough, and he got punished. Well, I think he was in two minds here. He, he really wanted to st step in and crack this, and probably should have. But also knows on the flip side that he's got to keep his opponent guessing and try and bring him forward at times. Lacked the execution. There's one of the probably at least two points a game he gets as a free point on serve. Such a big advantage. Oh, got a little caught up here, Zvera, but it gets away with it. shot of just how deep he is to return. Yeah, right now on the first serve, it's not paying dividends for Nadal. He's lost all six of the first serve that Zerev has made. as though he's going to get bossed around in that kind of exchange. Well, he won't. He won't get bossed around if Nadal's 
going to hit the ball on the service line, and that's what's happening. Different if you're playing a clay court where N Nadal's ball has a vicious amount of spin and it's an inconsistent bounce off a clay court that can go anywhere and it's heavy. But on a, on a hard court, it just sits here and these guys are just so good. Their ball striking is just too good. So he's got to find a way to get the ball deeper and he's got to get Big Zverev moving. Done a great job of chiseling out some points on the Dahl first serve as well, just at 50% at the moment, Rafa. Oh. <laughs> and he should have had that one as well. 15. Made the ground so easily. Almost had, he had, he had a few options. <laughs> you also remember, Mark, there was a time when Nadal was changing his yeah. service stance. Remember where he yep. was serving from? So he was creating a different angle. Particularly on that second court, he was standing even wider to try and slide it wider. So he, he must think about it. of that having to hit a lot more backhands yeah. last season as well an increase of about five percent more backhands for Nadal because of the change in position as you say which is not his better shot in my opinion it's not yeah, yeah. everything we'd hope this to be in the opening five games Zverev with the slight edge and the break three two Germany uh, Looking good right now with the Zerov boys. Just chatting to one of the German commentators saying that uh, when they were growing up together, they used to, uh, in this little small patch of grass in the back of their house, put down the, the water hoses as lines and just a little uh, something for a net as, as well. It wasn't a proper net and just go out there and play against each other, a little touch tennis. A bit like the Rockus boys who uh, in Belgium who used to play off against a couple of walls. You look at how how good their hand skills is. Yeah, they were playing off walls and everything in the back of their house. And to return that we see here, that was a re that's a return that Nadal would have never missed back when he was at his peak. And I just wonder just mentally what that does to him, knowing that he, he has just missed a return like that. I think it weighs heavily. 40. That's the hammer. It was uh, average about 61% of first serves in last season. Did uh, zero around 70% of points won. He's uh, a little under in terms of the first serves final target, but much over in terms of success he's having. And as you say, Josh. You can see there, Rafa actually moving backwards. It's quite tough to make that move forward, and the angles are so open for Zerov here today. That's a beautiful motion. Look at the knee bend, and then really nice, strong leg drive up and gets high up into that arabesque position afterwards. And he's balanced quickly after yeah. as well for a tall guy. Ah! 
pretty hard not to see this guy having a long career. Technically very sound in all departments, forehand, backhand. There's no real holes, is there? No. Very efficient. Doesn't muscle the ball. And also a much softer kind of racket and setup that he has. Obviously, we uh, looked at Del Potro, same height, and talked about what a wonderful career he has had and long career, hopefully, he will still have. But the injuries, but I mean, he was playing with that pro staff and mm. full poly string, strung at like 70. It's got to have had an effect. Yeah, for, for the viewers at home, that, that, that's a very difficult racket to use. That's a. It's like using a <laughs> piece of wood, basically. Stiff on the body, which means you've got to swing harder to get more power from it. Exert yourself far, far more for long periods. Yeah. Well, neither player haven't exert themselves too much in those two service games. Confident holds and swift. 4-3. I wonder how difficult it is for him to go to bed at night, just to actually <laughs> turn the lights off. But Everything's got to be perfect. It'll probably take him a while. Yeah, and yet you see him in Mallorca fishing and doing relaxing. He looks like one of the most laid back people of all time. Oh. See, wrap up. He's moved up <laughs> from the baseline to try and. Return this, and he's aware. He knows that he's got to change something up, but that was just a well-placed second serve. Have a look at him hitting his spots here. That's just too good. He's coming up a little bit more, Rafa, now. Oh, my. That is awesome. <laughs> Very aware there from Zverev, straight into the body. He's got no time out here, Nadal. He's being pressed, pushed around. He wants long rallies, he wants rhythm. Not getting it. He actually had 32% of his second serves uh, unreturned last year. Raonic, uh, I think, was the best last year with 35% coming back. Kyrgios also with a very healthy 33%, but it just goes to show the qualities there on the, the second, particularly for the German. If there is a way, though, there is a man that will find it. trying to make it a start about the height. I think a lot of players there with Rafa put the high ball would have felt the need to back off. He yep. didn't. And Djokovic does it beautifully as well, doesn't he? They've got yep. long levers. Big advantage of a double-hander being able to hit it sort of shoulder height with power, angle and control. You said at the start that the first set was going to be important and it's... Uh, Looking as though right now it's going to go Zerev's way. I 
think what would uh, disappoint Nadal is it's 5-3, just 34 minutes of play. This is taking nothing physically out of this young man. And that's what Nadal does better than anyone, and Murray as well. But Nadal especially, he, he can really wear you, the opponent down. There's been none of that. It's all been on Zvero's racket. I guess on the flip side that our perspective could be the credit to Zero for keeping those points short. Hasn't allowed himself to get embroiled in nine plus shot rallies. Sarah's going to challenge. He was pretty confident. Yeah. It's his last challenge for this set, unless it goes to a tie break. Good eye. Six. Six. Two doubles in a row. That's unusual. That's pressure. Yeah, and I think he's also, I mean, he loves to serve body, doesn't he, as well, on, on both sides. I don't think he's feeling like he's getting as much, maybe, out of that against Zverev as he would against other players. Hasn't had it too many, to be fair, but uh, interesting to see those last couple trying to go to the forehand of the German. Just green on the right of your picture at the back with the sunglasses on his head. I'll be happy with how things have gone so far this season for Zerov after their hard work in Florida. That's a pretty famous one too that Nadal likes to employ. That time he did get it into the hip of Zero. Back at his best, he was so hard to put away Rafa Nadal. You'd get him in a position like this, and he would come out swinging and play a lot more aggressive. That's probably been lacking a little bit over the last couple of years. When he'd get down, he'd get more aggressive, wouldn't he? Yeah. Rafa? And you sort of wonder why isn't he like that all the time or more consistent with the, the aggressive play? Yeah. Good tennis digs Rafa out of that particular hole, but. He's only got the one chance left to break the German. 4-5, the Spaniard trails. It's a beautiful day here in Melbourne. And not a cloud in the sky. The crowd absolutely loving this clash. You've got one of the all-time greats here on Rod Laver Arena. Rod Laver in the house watching this one as well. 
up against one of the Thank bright you. young guns of men's tennis. Very serving for the set. Thank you. Thank you. Not good enough from Nadal. He's just hoping that this teenager is going to miss, but he's fearless. He's just doing what he does at this age, not even thinking. Desperation to, to get a forehand. That's what you've got to love here. He gets around it. The revolutions. That. That one, as you could see from the camera angle, sitting a little lower. So not quite making the adjustment. Pressure building. Second three point of the game, is that what he's averaging? It's a huge game. Obviously, this first set, we, we spoke about it at the start. Much for Super. thought actually would have been tempting to take it into that backhand corner I think Rafa would have made the ground up you go gravel on the uh, right of Alexander's dad physio go but it is the teenager who takes the opening set and what a set 6-4 to Zarev yeah, it's got to give Zverev a lot of belief though 
What was the lose? exact score in their previous match when Zverev was up massively in Indian Wells? He won the first, Rafa won the second six love, and I think he was 5-3 out when it was match point. That's right. I wonder if... I just wonder if he still remembers that. He's processed it, got it out of the back of his mind, young Zverev. You don't forget match points no, that you on, lose, do you? Not on Nadal <laughs> at Indian Wells. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little bit of a cold start here to the second set from Zerev. One thing you know about Nadal, he's never going to drop in intensity. Got to match that all the way through. to an easy hold for Nadal at the start of the second. First game, second, second. 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 He's been here before, Nadal. We've seen him try and push up on return on the baseline, but I just wonder if he's going to try and flatten his ball striking out. He's going to stay up on the baseline more on rally position. Or if he's going to try and get the big man moving. We'll see something different for sure. He will not stick to a losing game plan, Rafa. He will try everything. Do you reckon his watch is worth these days? I know the one at the French last year was uh, just uh, over a cool half a million pounds. He's his watch that much was yeah that's a million aussie nearly it's a, it's a million aussie yeah three quarters of a million us you don't want to be leaving that around it's like someone nicking my house <laughs> so has he got a new one has he well no i think it looks pretty similar it's just well, yeah well he's got the same it's very we've got the same sponsor he's also wearing Similar one. I'm not sure if it's the same price range. <laughs> oh. 15. Only thing is, if someone next my house, they can take the mortgage with it.
Well, it was good in anticipation. He, he overcooked the drop shot. That's just too too deep, and Nadal covered that. And then that's a forehand that he would have made more often than he's missed in his career. Just looking at an article from Forbes magazine, actually, as you rightly say, that he wears the same watch. Well, they were certainly wearing it at the US Open together, and it was it was incredibly sold out. <laughs> well, I've, yeah, got, yeah. I've got a funny story. My, my, one of my, my friends from home, was in, he was in Monte Carlo at a lunch. He got invited to a lunch at uh, a restaurant, and anyway, it was... A, group of 10 people at lunch and then when the, when it came to pay the bill he went up to pay the bill for the 10 people and, and then the maitre d said oh no another gentleman has paid for your for your t entire table the, the man over there so he went over to thank him for paying the bill and he didn't know why and the guy said well thanks for supporting us you're wearing a richard miele watch that Rafa is wearing um and in support of the company we're going to buy you lunch but what he didn't know was that his was a fake watch from, from bali <laughs> Ten dollars he's ever spent. Yeah, Pro Monte Carlo lunch is not cheap for ten people. Oh, oh he just got his footwork out of sync <laughs> there, did Sereb. This new uh, generation of tall players, incredibly well balanced in general. I think Del Potro was a, was the first big man that moved exceptionally well and doesn't get enough credit for it. But these days they all move very well, balanced. Great change of direction, agility. Whereas probably the, the previous generation, they're almost regarded as awkward movers. Too many average movers in the top 100 these days, if you can even find one. Oh. This is good serving. Well, he's, he's racing through service games, isn't he? He's, he's not losing too many points at the moment on serve. He should be building pressure. But what it's doing, it's not giving Nadal the rhythm that he he likes to play, he likes to get into long rallies, those nine plus rallies, he loves that. A uh, couple of awesome forehands finishing the opening, couple of service holds for Nadal in a second, looking good. Nadal two, two up. Seats please. Any, Any seat for now, ready for along with a one triumph here of course a couple of final appearances lost to uh, Novak in that epic five hour plus and Stan Wawrinka who was on fire Met first sir. Team. Back up the first serve. That's one area where I feel as though we're going to look at his numbers through 2017. He had 36% uh, of his first serves unreturned last year. Oh. And he had a better number at 38. Of course, Raonic uh, always going to be devastating in that category, 49%. Good team. 
He's a little lower than team, which and team is a guy that tends to throw in a lot of kick serves. He doesn't really go with the big heat. And you feel as though, certainly for uh, Zerev, he'll want to be up in the 40s like the majority of the big servers in terms of three points. That's not aces. That's just not coming back into play and having to play the point out. Rafa's been racing through his service games, as Josh was saying, and that's put a bit of pressure on the teenager. Much more so now with the second serve. Great defense, but did he miss a trick there, Josh, and not come in, Zarev? Oh, he hesitated. You can't hesitate against the great Rafa Nadal. Just got caught there, a little close to the body. Expect a couple of cannons here. Great break for Rafa, he did what he does so well, he's built a career on, but if I was going to illustrate one thing that I think Zverev doesn't do as well at the moment as some of the, the best players was that serve there, Josh. I mean, that was conservative yeah. by his standards. I thought he was going to go the, 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 the bomb down the tee, that's where he gets a lot of free points. When you're down 15-40, you, you still even money to get out of that. I, I was disappointed with that serve. And also, when you look at the way Roger served against Thomas Burdick last night, that serve out wide on this court's been hugely oh, effective, yeah. or effective, especially when Rafa's so deep. He's not the finished article yet, the 19-year-old. <laughs> Rafa far from finished as well. It's an interesting serve you talk about the slider wide. That's I, I really believe the guys are using that a lot more over the last couple of years. I think the polyester string helps you be able to slice it away, get more sp nice spin, whether it's kick or slide for sure. Patient this game, Zverev, we've seen. Prepared to just take a step back, engage in a long rally. Bringing the crowd into it as well, Nadal. They want to see this match go deep. They love this brand of tennis that Nadal has played so often throughout his career.
actually got there, Nadal. Terrific effort from Zero to keep it going, though. 21 shots. 40 15. down the tee on that serve and there's nothing that the tall man can do about it at the moment. Nadal in total command in this second set, 4-1. That's what everyone's come to see out here is a competitive match. We had uh, a virtuoso performance late last night by one of the game's greatest players of all time, Federer against Burdick. He is a player, Federer, that can carry a one-sided contest like nobody else before him. How many points did he lose on serve last night? I don't know, it wasn't many. Two. Was two. Unbelievable performance. It was unbelievable. But this is when sports at its best, when you're unsure about the outcome. But for certain. It's his big frame down low, lives with the ball. so far for Zerev. I thought that might have been a little higher or needs to be. 40 and 50. 50. That was the serve we were looking for at 15 40. That's right. 190 out wide. Nadal will see Zverev change rackets in line with new balls. Most players will make a change, either with the new balls or the one game prior or after. You can see the balls there. The, the felt is so compressed, which means they'll travel through the air much faster than a, an old ball where the, where the felt fluffs up a little bit, gets dust and grain and use. New this year, right? This ball. It is a new ball. It's a faster ball. Definitely faster. Feels faster off the racket, more responsive. Do they make a decision like that here in Australia with consultation to players, or is that I their don't, own? I don't think so. They I think I think the decision made is what's in the best interest of for the viewers, the spectators, in terms of uh, length of rally. In mind, keeping in mind the heavy ball causes injuries as well. Do you think Wimbledon would consult Andy Murray about? what type of ball he wants, or cutting the grass, making it faster or slower? They may they may do now, but probably not, but they may do. I certainly didn't do before when uh, Tim was playing. I know, uh, obviously, as things got a little slower and heavier, that wasn't necessarily in his favour no. at all, especially for the medium hitters. I mean, the actual sort of... But the others at the other ends of each spectrum, it wasn't such a big deal. But the guys right in the middle, that was uh, that was a tough time for them on the grass. They really weren't getting much benefit at all. And you can actually literally see how much bigger the ball was. Mm. I know Todd Woodbridge has got a ball from all of the wins that he's had at, at Wimbledon. 
And that's a lot of balls. That is a lot of balls, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big room. <laughs> and uh, you can actually see the differential in them. Oh, just beaten for pace here, Nadal. He thought he had an extra step to get to the net. But this has come back like a rocket. This is great vision. Runs through it. Here, I believe he, he thought he had more time. Didn't hustle probably quite as much as he needed to. And that's the raw power from the next generation. I'm just... He's lost his vibration dampener, possibly. Yeah. Not all players use that. Zverev does. Nadal does. Plenty don't. Gives the racket a completely different feel. forehands in this game. Well, a couple of times when he's come in to hit this backhand, he's just got caught. He's a little, he's got such long levers, he's got too close to it. But have a look how much this means to Rafa. And the importance of staying in, on top, especially in this second set, in this contest, he knows how huge this is. Deep. So we're uh, lunging forward and the game out of reach now for the teenager. 5 2 Nadal. There's a man that loves his, the water, doesn't it? Whether he's on his boat, whether he's fishing. He was on the boat here in Melbourne as well, but right now it's time to focus on the job in hand. Dodged a bullet in that last game. A 30 year old very really had an opportunity to to rip that backhand and I just love the reaction from Nadal. He, he seizes the opportunity, he knows his awareness during the match of the importance. It's just it's just so crucial. So now the youngster under all sorts of pressure. Has he done it enough, Mark? Has he, has he looked to come forward, take advantage of these short balls and try and finish at the net? I don't think so. I think he's had a few moments where he could have not so much ghosted him, but accelerated in and, and taken advantage of some big hits. I think Nadal probably feels quite comfortable in defence at the moment, that if he just gets it back to a length, he just resets the point. perspective it's a exciting prospect because he's big off both wings as well which is what you have to be in this game these days
Sometimes overlooked, but uh, Nadal's backhand, because of the flatter nature of it, can be bigger than his forehand on average over the course of several matches. So it's not a weakness, and it draws the error from Zerev, and it brings up a set point for the Spaniard. Watch. over to his camp with a smile on his face. Where did that come from? Big flawless in the second set. It's a big it's a big team the Nadal team. And again taking some risk on it looks good when he moves forward. fired as well you know he's uh, he doesn't rest on his laurels no, no, he's fine. he knows he's good he's making an awful lot of money already but he wants it so badly talking about his big team he does have a big team but how about the uh, entourage he had in new york 32 people last year wow that accompanied him there that's a lot of rooms that's a lot of frequent points isn't it lordy points for your hotel mm. if you're picking up that tab <laughs> <laughs> Ten grand a night in accommodation <laughs> fees. <laughs> Break even if you win the tournament. Just there for a week. It's seven. It's like seventy grand in accommodation. Good team. as we see him closing on the winning here in the second set that in uh, New York last year because there was obviously a lot of talk about it his uh, other coach who obviously isn't around now Francisco Roy who runs an academy in Barcelona who uh, used to take over and Uncle Tony was there was actually helping Yao Salsa out in New York as well as because Salsa's coach had just become a dad something to cheer about. I'll tell you what, he was he's like a high lob. That was right up there. You can't even see the ball. It's got it's gone out of the stadium and come back. Went over to St Kilda. One of the best overheads in the game. He wasn't going to miss it second time around. For a second game in a row, set points. than Adal pumped up on a big court in a big match and make no mistake this is set a piece really well done from Rafa Nadal he played a lot better in that second set 
That's Garden Square out here, the back, here. back of Rod, La Rod Labor Arena. Big screens out the back there. We can sit on the deck chairs, have a few beers Focus and watch the tennis. Life doesn't get much better here in Australia, Mark. It, it really doesn't. Uh, I'll tell you, that's the one thing I love about this, the space here, walking around. You just don't feel cramped at all. It's not always the case. If you look at Zverev, Dominic team, team Kyrgios, who do you think's the best placed? Who'll wow. have the best career? Wow, no, that's a good question. Really good question and a very difficult answer, I think. Like that. <laughs> Nadal, Nadal can't believe it either. He's almost thinking, is that a miss hit? But no. I think Nick has marginally over Zverev the most talent. I would say team probably at this stage has worked the hardest, so he's been allowed to. He's a little older than Zverev. Zverev's had to bide his time, but he does work hard. And if you put all those two, thing, those two things together, I'm kind of leaning towards Zverev. He's probably, he's very good mentally as well, isn't he? He gets frustrated, like he did against Harsa when he was down, and he smashed the racket, but he got on with it straight away afterwards. He didn't allow it to just sort of linger and hang around. He's Pretty happy he's not with Yonix though. Do you see that today? I read that. What is yeah. it? What was it? Basically, if you break your racket, they're going to take a, a fair chunk of your contract back, which is not a bad thing. I know they used to write letters to their players mm. when they broke a racket saying that we find that unacceptable. Well, it's not in their culture, is it? No, exactly. And you watch Nishikori hang on to his Wilson. Um, so, yeah, they basically going to write it in the contract that if you break rackets, uh, you're paying not just for the racket. Which player do you think's prompted that rule to be implemented? I don't know. <laughs> but uses John X. Well, 86% of the time he's been over in this match. 100% of the time he was over in Grand Slam matches last year, Nadal, in terms of time between points. 20 seconds here, of course. Twenty seconds at Grand Slam tennis, twenty-five on the oh, ATP good, good, good. tour. I, I can't believe it's different. Yeah, and also best of three on the it ATP tour it as well. Should be the, it should, should be, be the other way around, if anything. It, exactly, but it should be twenty seconds. Better depth in the last 30 minutes or so, Rafa Nadal. He was dropping it way too short at the start in this match, but at the moment his depth is is better. He's flighting it deeper into the court. on that Josh at some good. points are just simply bigger than others and this is a big one right now the momentum has been all with Nadal for the last 40 minutes or so
Zverev, he would have loved to have played that point again. He, he had a chance to probably do more with the ball, and then he's got, once you get deep in the court with Nadal, and then you drop it short, it's good night. Can't defend that. How tough are those soft slices that Nadal's hitting for Zverev? Well, most double-handers don't really like having to hit a, a topspin double-hander off a short slice ball where they've got to generate their own pace. You've got to time it to perfection. You really got to trust your swing. And again, he's on the defense. Not so sure this is going to get it done. I feel he's got to back himself and, and pull the trigger early in the rally. He's got the weapons to do it. We've seen it in the first set. That's where I feel like he needs to come in, take it out of the air there, rather than waiting for it to bounce and allowing Nadal to get court position back. And he still should have made the forehand, no question. But again, there the little that was an opportunity, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I just feel that it was certainly was from 1530. As you say, he was a little conservative. A conservative doesn't generally get it done against the best players when they're playing well. Yeah, no, I think what you're alluding to there, they're the improvements that he, he needs to make, those little adjustments to move on into the top 10 and eventually higher than that. That's why practice is going to be huge for him and in terms of who he can practice with because there's very few people that can live with this type of tennis. And to get yourself in that situation of practice where you come in and knock volleys off. I mean, a lot of the time when he plays like this, he's not going to have to knock volleys off. As we see, just a little slip. No, because it's going to be too, too good, good anyway. Yeah. I think it's crucial, crucial for these young players that the big picture is always there about what your game style looks like and just executing it every single day and you'll lose matches early on in your career but eventually you you know if you do it every single day you'll you'll reap the benefits and i think he's got to add an extra element to his game at as opposed to just standing and delivering from the baseline. He does need to be able to, to keep the point short, push forward, finish the net. You just need another, another extra dimension to your game. Phenomenal. Brutal and breathtaking in equal measures out here. Stunning rally. Well, some of the defence here from, well, both players, but in particular, Zverev was just off the charts and eventually just floating the slice backhand long. 
he just needs to compose himself here, Zverev. That is not easy to get up to the line and have to serve and play another point after a rally like that. <laughs> that goes over. That's a clean winner. Beforehand. But I love the reaction from Zverev. He knows the importance of this stage of the match. One set all, this third set becomes almost the winner takes all, really. Epitomizes everything we love about Nadal and what has won him so many great trophies. My goodness, you don't want to play too many points like this in a row. I don't know how Zverev's legs would be feeling. He's got to be hurting. May not look like he's he's doing too much work, but let me tell you, he is. His lungs would be burning. I'm sure we'll see it. Great response once again, getting that first serve in. He's at 57% in for the for the match. Zverev on first serve, winning 76%. Wise, but if you don't get the placement, it comes back time and time again. No hint of panic on some shots at times where you maybe feel as a youngster he might. No, he's kept it together well. That's that's been impressive today, especially in this last this last game. Agonizingly close. Deuce. Just clips the top of the tape you'll see here. Nadal, Nadal had it covered. Oh, hanging in, in the air. I don't think Zerev knew for sure that was going to go out. He was beaten, no question about it. Come on! Get get punishing game for Zarev, but promising that he's come through it. Tested too up. Everybody talking about his potential and where he's going to be such a phenomenal junior rapper. This man hasn't been quite as prodigious as of yet, but uh, we saw in the last game the desire and determination to continue to make an impact in this encounter. And after holding a serve like that, he'll be trying to make something happen in the returns here. It's been a while since he's really put an awful lot of pressure on Rafa.
Good team. Good team. Just feel Nadal has the slight upper hand at the moment. Evenly matched on the scoreboard. The unforced errors there. 15 from Zverev, only four for Nadal. A little bit of heat for it. 195 k's an hour on serve there from Nadal. Accumulating pressure here. 40 he is racing through service games. He's done that better than his opponent. man was and he knew there was plenty of space in the forecourt didn't even need to float it that finely towards the net as good as there is just the one title of course uh, Nadal as a teenager tied Bjorn Ball's record of 16 titles <laughs> that's what I like about the fact Kyrgios last year three titles Dominic team seven in the last two years I mean, they're, re they're real winners aren't they they know how to win You don't. You actually don't get a long time uh, to make your move, do you? Look at someone like a Bernard Tomic. And if you don't sort of cash in when <laughs> when the time's right, you, you sort of get left behind, don't you? Particular. Well, if you're just not willing to work on your weaknesses. I think at the end of the day, I think that uh, that is uh, something, you know, look at Rafa, look at how good his slice backhand is now. Look at how comfortable he looks up at net when he comes in. And there's a lot of good players like uh, Burdic. You know, he, he's made a Grand Slam final, yet he's a long way off the pace, isn't he, from the very best these days. Joe Wolf and Songer. There's there's many the of them that are talented, hard working, but you're up against it. It's a, it's not easy. No, and you you know talk about it. You know, return games. Joe's been down there for a while with the two hands. I mean, maybe he can't change that. But uh, look at Tomic's return game. I think he's 18% of return games when he's down with like the likes of Sam Query. I feel like with. Bernard's game, he could be far more impactful mm. than that part of uh, the sport in particular. But I guess you know, my, my point is that you just get s that time doesn't wait for any player. No.
take the backhand early and rocket rod, <laughs> he loves it. The king's in the house. 43. How good. Yeah, this is a wonderful play. Take this early, get it on the top of the bounce. Probably didn't have to want to play a volley as, as tough as this, but gee, that's nice. Beautiful soft hands. Doing whatever it takes right now, Zverev, to keep Nadal at bay. And he's doing a good job of it. 3 2, third set. It's a city view. We've got a magnificent botanical gardens right next to this wonderful venue. It is the uh, easiest of all the slams in terms of getting to and from, isn't it? That's right. Most of the players would be staying really within a vicinity of just a short five minute car ride, a 10 minute walk. Most of the major hotels. Unlike the US Open, it can take you an hour from Manhattan to get out to Flushing Meadows. Parisian traffic at times as well can uh, slow you up. And the rain in the UK. Rod? <laughs> You've been there, obviously, just the one, one year UK. <laughs> Abnormally. <laughs> Pretty big 15, 20 minutes coming up here, Mark. For Zarev. Yeah, definitely. We, we, I think we both feel that it's now or never. He needs to win this third set. He's just hanging on. In the next couple of return games, maybe some from Zverev is just to maybe stand up and take a few chances. He's he's really deep in the court and he's in longish rallies. That's not what won him the first set. No, and he's actually got a big second serve return. He's equal fastest with Raonic, who had the fastest out of the top ten last year. He took a step back Canadian last year and just oh. belted the ball. And you look at that return he hit there. I'd actually advocate if he's not going to hit it hard, high and deep to the and get his feet up the court because he hit it and then just stayed three meters behind the baseline. Yeah, you're not going to win. He's not going to win those battles. No, Nadal, is he? <laughs> just take a little bit more risk on, minutes. back himself with his. He's got the tools, but he's got to find court position because mm -hmm. I think in these games where Rafa's been rolling through him, he's just as big as his shots are when it comes from that far downtown. Yeah, no chance. If you don't mind. He's stunned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was humanly possible to get that angle. They don't teach that at school. Three games. Especially not here in Australia. <laughs> well, greatness comes in the form of uniqueness, doesn't it? And it's always been this unique forehand. It's been a shot that has won him so many big matches. It's awesome to watch. Look at that. And actually, for once there, Josh, he's finishing over his right shoulder. So often you see the yeah. lasso style forehand. That was an unbelievable <laughs> angle. <laughs> Obviously also feeling like it's a big moment in the match as well, producing some of his best tennis. Set from, uh, 
accuracy has been uh, spectacularly good. It's not about the pace, but he's definitely hit his spots better in this third set. Thirty. Well. 30 love to 30 all quickly, double fault. Pressure starting to build. Rafa sensing the occasion. Fearless, love it. 40, 30. 30. Pulsating encounter in Indian Wells last year when these two met, it was uh, a muffled promise of what was to come because uh, you knew it was going to get better because Zero was going to improve and Rafa fighting hard to regain the kind of form we all know he possesses and he uh, doesn't seem too far off it here in Melbourne to be honest. Played very well against Baghdad the other night and he's had to play well here. Signify? Well, well, one, two thousand and nine. Yeah. I was thinking there's only nine French Opens. <laughs> a few more than that. Is it fourteen slams? Do you think he'll add to it before he's done? Yeah, I do. French Open and possibly one other. Yeah. from Zarif there. I kind of felt like he got out of just trying to rip the ball through and Nadali put a little more flight on the ball. Just got to make sure that he gets his feet back up onto the baseline when he gains a bit of an advantage. Interesting to see where his court position has sort of become after that opening set where he was pretty aggressive with it. He had this little opportunity before, didn't he, in the set, and he was a little passive. Will he get an opportunity to take it to Nadal right here? Oh, just a little bit of extra spice on this serve. Sun in his eyes, no. Shouldn't have been, or was it? You've got to blame something. Absolutely. Swing and a miss. That's clean bold. <laughs> Have a look. Gee, that's, that's rare.
That's just too good. Took it a different direction as well because surely Zero was leaning cross court. Right play though. I don't yep. mind. I don't mind this play. And you lose a point, that's okay. But that's what will win him this match. He is not going to win if he's going to get too deep in the court, get into long rallies. times potentially for Nadal's box but he calms them down with some wonderful tennis out there again favorite play into the body tucking up the big man and then finishing off cleanly with his forehand see that big step that Verov takes that's great moving Sixty-nine percent of his first serves have found the target here in the third set. It's been crucial. Good old stunt in the corner on the left baseline. The ball was caught. These are always slightly awkward moments. Mm. Zverev said it's out. I'm not. I don't think he's that confident. He's super fair, I've got to say. So if uh, this is in, this is an honest mistake by the teenager. Well, Nadal doesn't want to play too. We've been good. Jake Garner with the uh, decision there. What are you? What's your feeling, Josh? Well, it's a judgment call. Oh. Well, it's irrelevant now, but it's, it's always a tough one, isn't it? When the player, when it's called out, then the player at the same time simultaneously calls out. And that's what he can do, and if he can do that regularly, one day he's going to have his hands on this trophy as well. That's unplayable. in that game as well as excellent serving from Zero 5 4. So Nadal staying in his chair a little longer as he prepares to serve to stay in this third set. Just looking at some of the court position of Zarev as this match has gone on. He started uh, pretty aggressively, as I was saying, and actually maintained it pretty well through set two, but he's dropped quite deep in this third set. Thank you, seats please. Ready for 30 percent of the shots getting taken two meters or more further back in the court. And I just think that particularly in this game right now where the pressure's on Nadal, he needs to somehow shrink the court again as he did in the opening set. Get his feet up back up on the baseline. He served well, hasn't quite found the rhythm on return yet. Well, here's his Stop chance. Thinking. You can see he's standing really deep, isn't he? He's nearly in New Zealand returning this one. Miles back in the court. But you've got to push up after it. You've really got to get to that baseline quickly.
right play again. You got to like this type of point because he, he was deep to return, then got up onto that baseline. This cross court backhand from Zverev is potentially a match winner. If you can start executing this in these big moments, that might be enough. Pinches this game. He's, he's just missed this return and he's clipped the tape on the previous point. mistake from Nadal and this is where the young guns they're just fearless in these big moments you just know you just really don't know what to expect too young to get nervous from Rafa. <laughs> 167, so he, he took a bit off it, but got some nice swing on that first serve and got the favourite off forehand, just what he wanted. Yeah, total self-belief as well, having missed the one on the previous point. Didn't doubt himself for a second. Puts down an equal fastest serve of the day. Perfect blend. Variety, pace, and nothing Zarev could do about that. Pressure reverting back to the teenager. That's the serve that we saw when he was at his best. He has a good double hander down the line, doesn't he? And he's used it enough to keep Rafa guessing. So he's hit his off forehand well. Biggest is 215 Ks an hour today. Big point, big hit, big hold. Zverev beats six games to five. Six five, Zverev. We are Thank you. Please stay any seat for now. at a very pivotal moment. Well, can't, this is the last opportunity for Zverev to utilize the fact that he has served first in this set. He's got his nose in front. Will he come out swinging in this last game before we get to a breaker?
bit of extra pace just catching Rafa here. Love it too. Yeah, the one shot that has gone a little bit quiet is the three-quarter length cross-court backhand from Zverev that we saw in the opening game. That's right. I must say, though, Rafa's done a pretty good job of keeping it away from, from that part of the court where, where, he, where Zverev can step in and cr crunch it, but I'm sure we'll see it in a big moment at some stage in this one. Good little camera shot there, how much movement there is from the time that it comes off Rafa's racket and as it's moving through the air and just being able to pick it, particularly in these big moments. Uh, it may not look like a great serve, 173, but the serves with shape and spin are harder for the players to return than the big flat serve. There was a case in point when he looks back at this match. Good return. He got his feet stuck on the Melbourne sign there. If he'd have been another metre and a half further forward there, that ball actually would have sat up. It was on the way down. Great change of direction here. This, this may look like an easy shot, but to actually load up on that right leg and change direction, one of the hardest shots in the business. And to get the depth as well. was the shot that he was waiting for. 40, 30. Just didn't execute. too much that ball just needed to be run through and taken on by the time he hit it, it was just off the deck you watch this she starts slowing up as she got to the point where he was stopped well i think it's fair that this is to be decided by a tie break he won the one in indian wells when they played 10-8 you can see the record last year and not good for Nadal, who has a career record of 201 and 131. Lost. No break points whatsoever in this third set for either player. It's an advantage, isn't it? 217 Ks an hour. He, you've got to figure he's going to get two free points in this tiebreaker at least on serve, which means he can have two free swings on return. fastest from last year which was 137 miles an hour that last one pretty much 135 
knocked the wall down in the end. Great point here from Nadal. But, gee, his defensive skills and that off back, that cross court backhand, and then to not panic under pressure with a man at the net. Teenager, he's been he's been very well composed all afternoon. Zverev. Yeah, and he can be fiery at times. Yeah. Played a better point the previous one, didn't come away with it. He got his reward second time around. Can he consolidate the mini break? Dad looks on. Two. Idea was right. But as Andre Agassi always used to say, it's in the execution at the end of the day that makes the strategy work. Nadal recovers the mini break. Again, incredible defence shown by the Spaniard. Well, you alluded to it earlier in the in the call, Mark. That it's these little things that if he can refine and get a bit better at moving forward, and whether it's the drive volley or the final put away volley, that's the improvement that needs to be made for the young German. And I think we've seen in the last couple of points as well why he hasn't come in at times. Yeah prior to this and finish points. He's just not as confident up there as he would like to be. Absolutely magnificent. Well, there's one way that you don't have to volley, just smash winners. Three That's huge, isn't it? Huge. He's probably felt like he's hit four winners in this rally. And they each, each time keep coming back. This one. And another one. And finally. It's a good level. It's feeling like Nadal is ubiquitous out here. Just how do you get past him? I mean, he kept his composure though. He didn't panic and try and hit it even harder than he needed to. Plenty of pace on those balls. Terrific tie break. Nice fluctuations early on. Plenty of intrigue left in this one. <laughs> With 
finally seen it. That's what we've been waiting for. Four three. Just got it right this time. Just inside the baseline. He's got it on the top of the bounce. Great couple of little steps up the court there as well, wasn't it, from Serif? Dahl steals his dream with a dream like backhand. This looks easy, it's not. It's not easy when you've got Nadal just prowling around. So hard to hit a winner against. This is exhilarating. Tennis of the highest quality and the most pressurized environment as well in this tiebreak. Good first volley here and then backs it up with the backhand and this is what it takes, a slam dunk to win a point against Rafa. Courage and conviction in abundance in this tiebreak from the teenager. Typical, goes the body forehand serve, gets the off forehand, or could have hit the off forehand, gets the forehand that he wanted. Each point has been won by a winner. You want a picture of commitment? That is a picture of commitment. Backhands into Nadal's forehand, and he's pulled the Spaniard off the court. Six five. Oh, and he's attacked the forehand. He's attacked the weapon. The majority of his aces in the match have come in this set. Five out of eight. How he'd dearly love another one here. Set point. triumphs in the tiebreak. Wow! How well did he play? Well, we've been waiting for it. That backhand, that cross-court backhand. Will this be the year that Sasha Zarev breaks through? Was that a defining moment in his career? Certainly a huge confidence booster. Just, just to believe that you, you can play the right shots and execute under pressure against the great Rafa Nadal. Two sets to one lead, that's massive. Also, 
love the fact that he came back from a couple of little body blows in that tiebreaker as well. A couple of volleys and points that he was on top of. Yes, the tennis has got a few little tweaks, but character will carry you a long way. He's been here a, a lot of times in his career, Nadal. We know that he's not going to push the panic button. This four set. And although he has been here before, of course the odds are still very much in a in favour of a Zereb win. 25 times he's been trailing uh, by two sets to one, and he's won just nine of those meetings. So uh, it is significant that Zereb won that third set, but certainly it's uh, still up to the teenager to produce the goods out here between the lines. Is he capable of doing so? times today just on the movement oh, front he's kind of hit the brakes a little too early rather than continuing to push through Chance here from Rafa, no letdown from him in this fourth set. Two hours, 35 minutes into this match, he's, he's just warming up, <laughs> no problems. It's, it's, that's the experience, isn't it, from Rafa? Just the, these little twists and turns in a match that Rafa has endured over his career. It's also a habit, though, isn't it, Josh? This is what he does. It's not like it's anything different. He reacts so positively to adversity. That was a reprieve, though. Can he yeah. conjure up some sort of escape, Zerev? I just get the feeling this is a huge moment in this match for Zverev. 
can find a way to survive this game and just just compose himself again almost. Well, not that he's not composed, don't get me wrong, but yes. incredible serve. Two ten out wide. Great extension, full extension. Got the ball right at the top there. Pops it out wide. That is beautiful to watch. Great points have come and gone. He forces a fourth. And for the large part of this rally, he was doing it pretty comfortably, Zverev, and then all of a sudden, he's just he's pushed deep, wide. I mean, can Nadal be returning any further back in the court? He's on the fence. Well, have been disappointed dropping the third set, but it didn't allow it to infiltrate his mind or his play, and he comes out in the fourth even stronger. And Zverev just couldn't match the intensity that time around. Couldn't. Uh, be hanging any deeper right now or closer to his uh, players box getting all the encouragement he needs oh you could imagine the, the chatting the words of advice from uncle toby uh, uncle tony <laughs> and carlos moyer i don't think he's done a lot wrong to be fair Rafa out here i don't uh, think there's a change of plan is there it's just it's, a, it's actually in Zverev's yeah, hands a lot of it. I think he's just going to back himself uh, physically here, Nadal, and just his experience and mentality to, the, to try and get him to the finish line. I just wonder physically, how do you think? How do you think Zverev's feeling physically, Mark? 15. 15. Well, he looks fine at the moment, to be honest. But as you say, yes, the emotion drains. The ebbs and him. flows. Yeah. It's going to be interesting as well, like if you, how he manages it in this four set. If Rafa gets too far ahead, conserves some energy. It's not always easy, though, is it, to flip the switch? No, there's two hours 40 into play. Not too often does a player go onto the court and practice for three hours in a row. It happens, but it's not often. Fed was trying to book uh, the Senate court at Hotman Cup for four hours straight. <laughs> he's, he's very big on his, um, he's very methodical, Roger, in his training. There's hard work built into the program, don't you? With Roger, I think at times some people feel as though it just is so easy for him, but uh, there's been some punishing sessions oh, yeah. in Dubai. We've been playing practice sets with Dr. Polo, was it last year? Not last year, the year before. Five setters out there. I know, I went to Zurich with Nick Kyrgios 
to train with Roger for a week, and it was it was very planned. Two of the two of the days of the seven, it was a, a three-hour session in a row just so he could prepare himself, and they were playing best of five sets on that. Those three hours that was just in the morning, and then he'd go out and train again in the afternoon. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal week. His intensity Whoa. and just so planned. I think a lot of people watch Roger and they think it's it, it happens just so easily. His intensity was off the charts. <laughs> Talking of five sets. I think we're heading there in this one as well as Nadal already halfway to victory in this fourth set. Three love. Thank you. Ready for play. Seats, please. Do you think the crowd is loving this battle? Yeah. Thank you. I think everyone in world tennis is loving it. Not quite there yet, but obviously uh, start getting the feeling against great champions. I know it was obviously in Sampras's house at Wimbledon when Roger beat him for the first time, but these are the sort of moments that you remember in a player's career before they come great. That, though, of course, Roger's win there was an indelible image. That's right. 7-5 in the fifth, wasn't it? Yeah. Two, 2003. Winning return. Yeah. Important for the young German here that he wins this game and just tries to steady the ship a little bit and remind himself that it's just the one break. And if he can just try and stay tight and stay close, needed this to be just a bit of a, a less pressurized game uh, try and race through this service game and try and turn the tables Good game. Clean hitting. He's on the board. Serving of energy out the other end, is there?
But all this shows in the goal, the right baseline, the ball was called in. He's pretty confident. Well, this is a tough one when you're trying to play the backhand and play the shot and make a call. Not easy. He's got it wrong. Fifteen That's a rare error. Yeah. That's a mental error. <laughs> that, however, is immaculate. Oh, that's the best serve I think he's hit today to the outside. Maybe all year. <laughs> Have a look at this swing off the court. That was perfect. He's made it. He's given himself a chance here in the fourth set. 30-40. Well, it's the trusty double-handed backhand cross-court. Well, that'll inject a bit of energy back in the, the body of the big man. Surf, sliding away from Zerif. Great serve because if you miss your, your spot here, it'll go wide as a fault, or if you don't get it wide, it's in the hitting zone. So brave serve there from Nadal. Cleaning the lines on serve this game. Nadal outlasts him. Twenty seven shots, the longest of the match. Yet 
Zverev refuses to go away in this game. He's a tough cookie for a teenager. These are the mini battles within the greater battle that need to be won. Yes. Still life in the arm. That would have been equal fastest serve of the day for Nadal. Another fast hold, but a very valuable one. In fact, priceless. 4-1, Spaniard in the fourth. Everybody taking a collective deep breath after another game that could prove which way this four set is ultimately going to go. Or has Zerev still got enough in the tank here to turn this one around as well? Nadal, who did have a uh, unbelievable five-set record, what did he win? 15 out of 18 at the start of uh, his career. The only losses coming to to Hewitt at the Open in Australia in uh, 05. Federer in the Miami Masters, and he had match points in that one, of course, earlier in the match. And then Federer again at Wimbledon in 2007. Oh, but has lost his last three to Lucas Pue. Vadasco here last year, who hit him off the court. Fabio Fanini, who came back from two sets of love down at the US Open. So all is not lost for Zerev. But I think Rafa's is in better it's shape now. I think he's worked hard in the off-season. The shut down the year early last year. I think he's a, he's a he's a better in better condition now than when he had those losses. Flown by three hours. Mm. 30 30 30. 30. That's becoming a little problematic. I mean, 11 aces offset by nine doubles. That's not as many free points as he would like in the context of the match. And he's allowed Nadal into this service game. Run down the line well already this tournament, but he's needed it today. And that's the 
the danger, I guess, in Zara's mind. If he doesn't get it wide enough, he's suddenly the one that's doing the chasing from down here. Probably the first game where he's looked fatigued. This is a two double faults. Missed forehand, that's just flat. And it's understandable. Yeah, and I don't know if that last point, as you say, I think it was fatigue. I wonder whether it was more mental than yeah. physical. Just trying to stay in the moment. Not his, not his greatest challenge, but when you're standing in the crowd in the front row to return, it's hard to see that line. You're so far from it. And it's these little reactions that when we haven't seen in four sets. After three hours of tennis, both guys, their, their ball striking is very clean. Very confident. And great shot there of how Nadal, how far Nadal is standing back. It's a huge hole. Yeah, I think Nadal is human, isn't it? The other game took a little bit out of him. He got lucky with a couple of doubles in that game from Sarah, got himself in it, but it still felt as though he was somewhat recovering. Yeah. And the danger is Zverev can just rip a couple of big forehands, backhands quickly, and he can get the break back. Not saying he will, but he has the ability more than most. A bit, hey, Josh, yeah. just what you're saying. He's just got so much firepower Love all around team. the park that you know, this is not a bad shot. This is a neutral slice. Hard to make angle work. But, gee, Severo, this off forehand is one of the best in the business. It really is. Good aggression here from Rafa. Sensing the occasion. And you'll just see him just accelerate just that little bit more on this double-handed backhand, just beating his opponent for pace.
It's in the And again, it's the the tactic of attacking hard and fast into the Nadal forehand, which is having success for the German. Delicately poised these last uh, three games since Nadal got up and running quickly in this four set. A route back into it, certainly tantalizingly in front of Zerev. Can he make it happen? <laughs> Not with shots of that athleticism from his opponent. I just love his reactions. <laughs> didn't quite get this volley right, but didn't panic either. Look at that. Not many better athletes in the world than that man right there. Yet again, Zarev. Just hanging around, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. With a searing return. The depth that he gets on his return is remarkable, as well as the pace. Just when you think Zarev's just dipping or he's fatigued or annoyed, he just comes back at Rafa. Rafa, he, he would be aware of this and think, should have my opponent down for the count, but this is a great contest. Good defence from Zarev, but it was all out attack from Nadal. And attack beat defence. Well, Zverev was just barely hanging in here, trying to get on the front foot, but it was Rafa. All Rafa. Capitalise on another terrific return, and Nadal halts the challenge of the teenager once again and moves to within a game of taking this to a fifth set. First things first, he's got to hang on to his serve to try and at least force Rafa to serve it into a fifth. And then who knows what will happen when we get there. What we do know is there's a good chance that. Uh, Today's tennis here at the Australian Open. <laughs> Will be finished tomorrow. That's right, they're getting their, absolutely getting their money's worth here on Super Saturday. The night session was scheduled to start at 7 o'clock local time. already quarter past seven. There's a good chance that uh, the Aussie fans will be pretty Good revved news. up by the time they come in here. Very, Saturday night. Very. 165 k's an hour, this forehand winner. It's 
Got a big forehand, but not the biggest ever hit. And it may surprise you who hit the biggest ever forehand oh. recorded by Hawkeye. No, I, I'm, you have to give me a hint. What country is he from? Will I know it if you The greatest country, well. Outside of Australia. Huh? The greatest country outside of Australia. Exactly. Andy Murray. From Scotland, of course, <laughs> before we get that one wrong. Yeah, 124 mile an hour forehand in Cincinnati that's, that's against over, over Marty, Marty Fish. Against who? Marty Fish. Over 200 k's an hour. That's big. That's huge. That's Josh Eagle like. Yeah. In my dreams. All right, the moment of truth for Rafa, who's really done well to keep his nose in front in this fourth set. Got off to that fast start, secured the early break, and he hasn't looked back. Can he close it out? create an amazing angle off it but it's just so reliable it doesn't break down under pressure it's, it's actually very simple technically got good depth on it so smart that's a server I'm surprised Rafa hasn't actually used it more today, or just in his career. He does it well against Roger Federer. But to a double-hander, that's a, that's a great serve. to a right, he's and on the juice side is not easy Pretty to connect to with. And for a serve out there, that was a good pace again. still believes he can do something he can make it happen and he's right to do so well, I think the training that you've spoken about with Jez Green in November is paying off pretty simple One of those that gets away from him. He's already shown in the match that he can produce under pressure. It just didn't happen that time. And the miss produces set point for Nadal. the way to do it as well an eighth base and a fifth set for us to savor
Well, he thoroughly deserved that set, Rafa Nadal. This man's already had an illustrious one, and he knows how to win over five sets. He's been a bit of light on wins over five sets recently. He'll be looking to uh, put that right. Zverev's played five five-set matches, and he's won three of them. Anything for now, please. Thank you. game here for Zverev must hold use the the fact that you're serving first in the fifth set and just get up that one game it just gives you that mental edge psychologically you believe you're winning or in front creates pressure on the server That's a statement. play a point more beautifully than that if you're Rafa Nadal. Just working the youngster from side to side. He would have felt like he's done some sprints here. Beach sprints. start in the fifth as it was in the fourth and Zerev trudges to change ends it is just relentless isn't it the uh, energy that he brings to a tennis match consistently and while Zerev had a couple of crucial moments at the start of sets hasn't been able to match him Those will be the little things that the team will review and he will also be able to see clearly upon the review that he can make some small adjust adjustments and see what the great Rafa Nadal has done to him. He's just jumped him, ambushed him early in fourth and the fifth. Just brought plenty of energy. His intent, Rafa, desperate to run every ball down. Not a bad start. Every sort of small opportunity Zverev's had in this last hour or so, he's just been. He's been, well, I guess Rafa's snuffed him out, hasn't he? He's just played the big points really well, Nadal. Just like that. Mini opportunity. 
and it's gone pretty quickly. Yeah, and the change up's so good and accurate as well. I mean, we saw at the end of the four set, those swinging serves out wide, even the serve and volley, and then suddenly he puts one down the tee there. Yeah, and you could imagine the very sort of leaning, looking for that slider wide. Great right, Has served well. Up at 76% for the match. That's high. That's above his yearly average. Jeez, look at his second serve points one. 70 per six more, 69 percent for the match. That's way above his average. Yeah. 57 career-wise. What, what is it? 57. What do you put that down to today? I think Zero's standing a little deep. It's, it's, it is one. That's how he likes to return from and crack the ball hard. But I think, to be honest, today against Nadal, it hasn't worked for him. That's He's need to gamble a bit more. His win percentage on first serve. Year on year. Because at the moment, this one is at 71% of points one. It's normal. He's just 1% above. Yeah, you know, he's usually around 72%. Roger and Rafa are actually 57% of second serve points one. They're the Equal best all time. Both guys just so going to get a new racket, a freshly strung one. Again, you look at the pinpoint accuracy that Rafa has served that game with. He's managed to outmaneuver Zerev. He's taken him off the court. And that's been a huge part of it. And then he's put a few down, obviously, down the tee that's obviously caught Zerev out. And, uh, and again, you look at the first game that Zerev served here, 60% of his first serves going in. He won one of three. And I, again, I just feel as though at times he doesn't do what Rafa's done to him, which is get it as close to the lines and, and utilize that first serve. And the very best will make you pay for those small margin of errors. Has he come in enough, Zverev, in your mind? No, but I don't think he trusts himself enough yet. We've seen a couple of times when he's when he's missed, he trusts that kind of tennis all day long. <laughs> well, that took a lot out of them, that first point. Game it was needed and he delivered 2 1 Nadal fifth. You're never quite sure what you're going to get when you come to uh, a tennis event, you're never quite sure how long it's going to last, what the match is going to develop into. Obviously, once we saw this one on the schedule on the Rod Laver Arena, we were hoping it was going to be a classic, and it certainly turned out to be that way. We have seen some of the best hitting that uh, we've witnessed. All tournament, of course, Dennis Isterman gave a virtuoso performance out Back here and knocking out the world number two and six time champion here. But this arguably has been 
a little better in terms of some of the shot making that both of these two have produced. I think we both agree that if Rafa wasn't in his absolute best today, he would have more than likely have gone down already. But he has certainly brought his best tennis to Melbourne this year. Quality is all there to see for everyone. Not for two. How old is this kid? Mentally a lot older than us. Unbelievable performance so far today. Just physically to hang with Nadal. Getting off the line, the service line. And all catches it late. And again, these, are, these small opportunities where Nadal has been so good Please. all afternoon at controlling. Beautifully efficient. And immaculate in its execution as well, right from the return. He got it absolutely spot on. And perhaps another twist coming up in this captivating contest. Beautifully taken. A one-handed classic catch. Oh, stand up and take the bow. I mean, that's just, I mean, this is just like a hand in a glove. <laughs> Quite brief. a knockout punch. Well, it's easy to say from the sidelines, but maybe Zverev could have been more aggressive early. Nadal just gets so aggressive himself when he's down these break points. He's done it so well over his career. Thank <laughs> you. 
He's back. Not that he went too far anyway. We're all level. Two games on. And as you saw, the sun setting in Melbourne, but uh, the sun not close to setting yet on this one. He can't believe it. One of the few errors he's made on a big point. And there'll be a few restaurants in Melbourne tonight getting phone calls right now saying we're going to be a little late for our reservation. Oh, yeah, it's full house here. No one's leaving. Awesome response from Rafa. Gets on with the job. Gets over the disappointment quickly. Off forehand, the old faithful. Good to you. It's a penetrating shot because he doesn't shape it with a huge amount of spin, so he gets it down the other end of the court quickly. Oh. 211, that's huge. 30 50. Couldn't have asked for a better time for a free point. In these moments, this is just when you want a little bit of breathing space. And again. Perfection personified. It also the call on the left far side line. The ball was caught in. You've got a challenge quicker than that. Uh, yeah, you, can't, I agree. you can't walk up and have a look at Mark and go, well, I'm going to challenge. You can if you're Rafa. 40 15. The dog has two chances for him. Oh. 40 15. He's in two minds. Wanted to rip, change his mind at the last moment just to try and roll it. that any better in the court. Juice. Get the feeling this is turning into a huge game. Oh. And the points are revolving around pretty quickly, aren't they? The crowd reveling in this, but Zerev just taking a little extra time. Challenge 
with the break back and then looked on his way to consolidating it with an easy hold up 40-15 and a fairly simple forehand. Suddenly it's break back point for Nadal for the lead. fluctuations in this game alone he reads the game so beautifully Nadal he was all over that just clips the tape on the forehand pass sound that accompanied it as soon as it left Zverev's racket you kind of knew it was going long This is not an easy shot because he has to move forward, get it up and down quickly because he's out of position where he's standing on the court. If Rafa gets any play on this, it's good night. world point of the tournament has to be 37 <laughs> and Zerev is paying a price for it down the other end of the court as you can see he's going to try and get through this game but the onset of cramps for sure. So close. Deuce. Well, his quad, you can see there, is almost lock, locking up on him. Cannot do much about it. You can't get treatment for cram. Oh my goodness. He's loving it. He's not. <laughs> wow. Well. 
game you talked about him reading the game so well that's what kept him in it and ruthlessly steals away Zverev's dream there as though Nadal will move back in front in this fifth set. A game that looked as though it was going to be simple became sensational. And quite simply may define which way this match goes. 3-2, Nadal, fifth set. Nadal leads three games to two. Zverev has two challenges with him. I don't know how much challenge Zerev has left as well. The cramp is coming and it looks like it's uh, coming up pretty fast as well for young Sasha Zerev, who has invested everything he has mentally and physically. It's got to be hard to believe that he can come back from this, I, I think. Yeah. Look at him now, he's, he's really laboring, really laboring. Nadal in the ascendancy in the fifth and final set as the final act unfolds. It's funny that one point killed him. That is the point of the tournament that was possibly the knockout blow. Brother Misha in the front row there on the right as well for Sasha supporting him today. He'll be out here tomorrow against Andy Murray. He'll also be tested physically. A crowd doing everything they can. They have embraced Zerev today. He has that ruthless streak, and he's not going to allow Zerev any chance back into this right now. Not even sure holding on to his last service game would have been enough for the young German, to be honest. You wouldn't think so. He'd be just thriving, Rafa. He'd be thriving off the sight down the other end of seeing his opponent he's suffer physically. But this, this, these matches should be the impetus for Zverev to realise that he's got to learn to come forward more, finish points at the net, for his development of his game and just tactically against a, a physical opponent. Sounds simple, but that's what he's going to do. And Rafa still nearly gets there. Two. 
He's uh, certainly not going to go long in the rallies now. Four or five shots at best, you feel, is his only way. <laughs> He's good enough to hit winners as well. <laughs> He's just hoping he gets a bit of a second wind here. How good is that from Rafa as well? Such an accurate forehand, forcing Zero to move to a place he really didn't want to go to. See Uncle Tony and Carlos Moya. They've seen a lot in their time, and they know this match is just is not over just yet. This girlfriend's watched a fair bit of tennis in her time as well. like a great boxing match between these two but it was Nadal who wrestled control at that point he just upped the ante right at the end here and is this the final knockout punch Not going away. 
Well, he may not be able physically at the moment to have the body of a champion, but he certainly seems to have the will of one. Genius. Unfortunately for Zverev today, the man down the other end has got both. No, oh, I think you're right. I think Rafa has moved particularly well. This is as good as I've seen Rafa move in a long time. And additionally, I can see his serve particularly well. Those two parts for me have been the most impressive from this man, Rafa. But it's not over. This is a big game for Zverev. He's just got to believe that he can hold serve and he may get a chance. Absolute beauty. Not if you're at Zerev's end of the court, but for all of us who have witnessed this man's magical career. Out of the 100 million prize money, how much do you think that shot has earned him? At least 80 yeah. million. Left it all out here, Sasha Zarev. And a deserved standing ovation for some of the crowd here for the effort. They just won't go away. Neither of them. nigh for Sasha Zverev as Nadal grabs the second break in a pulsating fifth set. Well, four hours and two minutes. It's just past eight o'clock local time in the evening here in Melbourne. Zverev's time will come, you feel. It's just not today. Nadal serving for the win. Thank you. The dog is in the call on the right center service line. The ball is called.
when he's needed it, he's produced it. It hasn't always been the case in the last couple of years for Nadal. But it has been today. Adult. And he has given them plenty to cheer about. We'll see more of this man. He's brought the best out of Rafa today. Thank you. Please. Two match Thank points. You. The look of delight of a champion who was pushed to the brink but came back to see off the teenager. And for those who wish to shorten Grand Slam tennis matches on the men's side to three sets, this is a match you want to watch because this is the heart and soul. This is the type of occasion that tells you what these great champions are all about and just listen to that crowd what a phenomenal four hours they've just witnessed <laughs> 